if you have got a lawn, you will no doubt produce plenty of grass clippings. I produce loads and loads of these, but it is actually free plant food. So please don't waste your clippings or put them out for collection. Grass is a superb resource most gardeners have regular and easy access to. It contains lots of nitrogen, but also potassium and various trace elements too. It's also free. This makes the grass clippings we take from our gardens a real bonus. I like to leave my lawn to grow a little bit longer before cutting it. This gives the wildflowers within it a chance to flower and gives the likes of spiders, beetles, bugs and toads places to hide, scurry and scumper. I mow each area of lawn in rotation once every three weeks, but however you mow, don't mow really, really short because it does the wildlife no favours at all and it isn't good for your grass either. It's getting a touch on the long side now, so let's get mowing. Now, when you come to mow, it's worth setting the blades of the mower a little bit higher, say at least one inch or three centimetres high. That way there's still plenty of habitat left for bugs to uh, hide down within, and also it'll protect the crowns of any wildflowers within your lawn. I leave most grass clippings to just fall back onto the lawn. This way they'll gradually rot back down into the ground or be taken down into the soil by worms to return their nutrients and help feed the grass and keep it lush and green without the need for artificial fertilizers. I have never used any weed killers on my lawn. This has helped to create a rich and varied sward that's fantastically friendly to both wildflowers and insect life as well. It also means that I know the clippings from the lawn are clean and safe to use throughout the garden, especially on my edible growing areas where we definitely don't want any weed killers. Or you could of course just attach the lawnmower bucket to catch the lawn clippings that way. Should have thought of that. The first and perhaps most obvious use for our nitrogen-rich clippings is as an ingredient to the compost heap. Like other fresh leafy material, grass clippings are greens, which can help to balance out more carbon-rich browns, such as prunings and torn up cardboard. Just add the clippings in thin layers with other ingredients. This will stop them turning into a gloopy sludge, which can sometimes happen if you add too much in one go. If you've got lots of grass clippings to add, you can do that, but just be sure to create a sort of lasagna effect with layers of browns in between. That will create a nice mix in your compost heap and help to keep everything nice and open and airy. Or you can spread them out onto the compost heap in thinner layers, then allow them to dry out and add more gradually, adding each layer of grass clippings once the previous layer has dried out. But I implore you, don't put all your grass clippings in one basket. Share the nutrient value of this ready resource by simply scattering it over the soil surface as a mulch. Two arguments levied against using grass clippings as a mulch is that they can mesh together to form a thick mat like they might on the compost heap, and also that they might provide a safe haven for slugs to take refuge. But just like we did on the compost heap, you can avoid that by spreading them in thinner layers, no more than an inch or say two centimetres thick at a time, and even thinner, just a thin scattering till the soil goes out of sight if slugs really are a problem in your garden. And then once they've dried out and started to uh, disappear, you can always go in with a few more. Another way to dodge the slugs is to dry your grass clippings before using them. Just spread them out onto a hard surface or tarp and then leave them ideally in the sunshine and then once they're crisp and dry, rake them up to use as thickly as you like. I've seen both frogs and toads in my garden and as well as hopping about in the grass, I've often seen them up here in the beds and in amongst the grass clipping mulches. So I know that these clippings are actually helping with slug control by inviting these hungry amphibians to the party. If you like gardening in step with nature, then that's what this channel is all about. Growing in a more earth-friendly way. So if that's you, do be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications.
Grass clippings do all the good stuff that any mulch will do. They will help to suppress weeds and they will shade the soil, helping it to hold on to moisture for longer and keeping roots nice and cool in hot weather. Then as they decompose or get drawn down by the worms, they will release their nutrients, all while adding valuable organic matter that will help to improve soil structure and moisture holding capacity. Oh, and there's some evidence that by covering the soil, you're making things a lot harder for pesky root maggots. Good news all round. Now, I don't generate loads of grass clippings because I prefer to, on the whole, just let them fall where they're cut to keep the lawn nice and lush and green. So I need to prioritise where I put my clippings. So as well as them using them around these sort of alliums for those root maggots, I'll also put them around bigger crops like corn and tomatoes. And because they're relatively high in nitrogen, they're also great for nitrogen loving plants like chard, kale and cabbages. One of the things I love about my own clippings is that they contain a lot of different leaves from all the flowers that grow in the lawn as well. That makes for a nice varied mulch that is much less likely to sort of mat together and keeps it more open. Now remember that clippings will of course disappear into the soil, so just top them up from time to time as and when needed. Sometimes you'll need to put really long grass clippings like these to use. They're great for laying at the base of fruit trees and bushes. These will dry out and form a nice weed-free cooling cushion. Magic stuff. My fantastically varied clippings of both grass and lawn flowers is the fantastic starting point to a refreshing brew of grass tea. Though we won't be drinking it, we'll be making my very own garden sourced liquid feed. To make a grass tea, simply drop your grass clippings into a bucket and just firm it down a bit as you go. We want it about two thirds full. As well as grass clippings, you can add weed free or rather seed free weeds and our old friend nettles would be really good as well. By having a nice varied mix of green materials in here, it also will create a more balanced nutrient profile, which will be great for your plants. And now I'm just gonna cover the leaves over with some, ideally some rainwater, which is what I've got here right to the top so the clippings are all covered over. Now it's just a question of covering it over and leaving it to steep and do its thing for at least two weeks. Here's a batch that's good to go and if I dip this glass in and get some of it to show you, crikey, you can see how much the water's changed. Pongy stuff. Now we can just strain this off uh, the concentrate and then all the gloopy grass clippings left behind can just be dumped onto the compost heap. And the concentrate will dilute one part of that to 10 parts water to use around plants. Beautiful stuff. This grass tea is really great for leafy greens like spinach. More grass tea, Vicar? Yes, please. But what if you want an even punchier and quicker alternative to grass tea? Well, I've got you covered. We can tweak our grass tea recipe by simply adding one cup of processed poultry manure or chicken manure pellets into our bucket and then just two generous handfuls of grass clippings. You could use nettles or indeed comfrey and we will be doing a deep dive into comfrey and other must grow veggie garden flowers in our next video so be sure to catch that one. Then it's just simply a question of covering it all over with water again and we're going to give it a good stir. Now this stuff is a bit pokier so we only need to leave it for two or three days maximum before we're gonna strain it off and feed our plants with it. Now this truly organic and wholesome brew doesn't keep very well, so use it as and when you need it and make up fresh batches every few days. This really is proper swamp juice. It's quite strong though, so I suggest using it just one part to five parts water this time around your deserving plants. Who would have thought our lawns could be the source of so much goodness? If you'd like to know more about which organic feeds and fertilizers to use with which crops, then do mosey on over to this video where I review my top five. I'll catch you next time.